As you watch this teaching, please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see. Hey, it's Rick Renner, and I'm still in traffic in Moscow. We have a lot of traffic in the city of Moscow because there's 30 million people in transit. And I'm so thankful for GPS because it helps us get where we need to go and circumvent a lot of problems. And it makes me think of Psalm 73, verse 24. It says, you will guide me all my life and then receive me into glory. And it's the promise that if we'll listen to the Holy Spirit, He'll guide us our whole life and then we'll go to heaven. But if we listen to the Holy Spirit and let Him be our GPS, our journey will be a lot more enjoyable. And if we make mistakes along the way, He'll recalculate to get us back on track. And that is what I want to talk to you about today. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner, and my friend, I've been sitting in this chair waiting for you, and thank you for letting me come into your space. As I told you in the introduction to today's program, today we're going to be talking about being led by the Holy Spirit and what to do if you've messed up. In fact, I'm teaching a brand new series called Recalculating. Recalculating. How to get back on track if you've messed up along the way. Today we all depend on GPS. It's in our cars. It's on our phones. And GPS leads us and helps us to avoid traffic jams, accidents, catastrophes along the way. And if you really listen to a GPS, it will show you how to get where you need to go and give you the shortest route to get there. Well, if we listen to telephones and if we listen to GPS, how much more should we listen to the Holy Spirit who is in us all the time, speaking to us, trying to lead us and trying to guide us? And if we've messed up along the way, the Holy Spirit will say, recalculating, recalculating how to get back on track if you've messed up along the way. And my friends, this series is so helpful. You'll be glad that you got it and you need to hear it and hear it and hear it because the Holy Spirit will lead you if you will listen. And if you've messed up, he'll recalculate to get you back on track. And it comes with a study guide with all the points, the Greek words, everything in the series is in the study guide. So you can read it while you see it or while you hear it. And right now we're also offering you my book, which is called The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. The back of the book says, are you ready for a life filled with adventure? And that's what you have when you follow the will of God. It will lead you into such an adventurous life. I say that when you follow the will of God, you leave a black and white world and enter into a full color spectrum. Life becomes so exciting when you follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and he puts you right in the middle of God's will. So be sure to order this book as well. And you can order all of these by going online or by giving us a call right now. And please let us know how to pray for you. We are praying people in this ministry. If you've ever reached out to us before, you know that when you call us or send us your email, you will be met by somebody who really knows how to pray. And Jesus said in Matthew 18, 19, if two of you will agree as touching anything, I'll do it. We will get into faith-filled agreement with you and Jesus will move on your behalf, but let us know how to pray. So call us right now or send us your email, but reach for your Bible because today we're going to see six signals to help you really know you're being led by the Holy Spirit. In Monday's program, we saw Jesus' example of trusting the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And we began with John chapter 16, verse 13, where Jesus said, how be it when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you. And we saw the Holy Spirit really is a guide and he'll guide us if we'll trust him to do his job. Then we saw yesterday in Romans chapter eight, verse 14, as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God, which means if you're a child of God, you have a right 
to be led and you should expect to be led by the Holy Spirit. But today we're going to move to six signals to help you know when you're being led by the Holy Spirit. But I want to quote this verse from Psalm chapter 73, verse 24, which says, Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterwards receive me to glory. And it is God's promise that he will lead us in life and then receive us to heaven. But hmm, most of us make the mistake of acting presumptuously. And that's why Psalm 19 verse 13 says, but keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. And one presumptuous sin is just to assume that you know what you're supposed to do when really God wants you to do something else. The second part of the verse says, let them not have dominion over me, which means when you make a presumptuous sin and you head in a wrong direction, you end up in a mess that seems to conquer your life. But in those events, the Holy Spirit helps us to recalculate and get back on track. But Today, we're going to be looking at six signals to help you know when you're being led by the Holy Spirit. And I want to tell you that I have a wonderful series on this called Knowing the Will of God. You should go to our website, look it up and order this. It's so practical and helpful to let you know how to know that you're really doing the will of God for your life. But today, I want us to begin in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, where the Apostle Paul writes, and he says, In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. And in this verse, the Apostle Paul says that when God is speaking and God is leading, he will always affirm it and confirm it in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Witnesses. God may speak to you through your pastor. God may speak to you while you're reading your Bible. God may speak to you through a friend or through a parent or a person that you respect. God may speak to you through a word of prophecy. God will speak to you in the mouth of two or three witnesses. And what I have found in life is that if I'm really being led by the Lord, these witnesses will all agree and I'll know that it is a green light that I am to proceed. Hmm. If several of the signs seem to be rather conflicting, then I take it as a yellow sign that I am to slow down and proceed with caution. And if it seems like everything is saying no, 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 then I take it as a red signal that I'm to stop and not to proceed. But there are six signals that you can encounter along life to help you know if you're headed in the right direction. And signal number one, are you ready? Is the voice of the Bible. God will never lead you to do something that is contrary to the scriptures. The God who is leading you is the same God who wrote the Bible, and God is never going to lead you to do something that contradicts with what he has said in the Bible. And I'll give you some examples. God will never lead you into an adulterous relationship. But you know, when people want an adulterous relationship, they can justify that maybe God is creating for them a new relationship to make up for an emotional deficit in their life. But my friends, it's not God that's leading you. God will never lead you to do what is contrary to what he has written in his word. God will never lead you to lie, never, because the Bible strictly forbids us to lie. God will never lead you to do something contrary to what he's already written in the scripture. God will never lead you to steal. The Bible says thou shalt not steal. So there is no time ever in your life when there's a justification to steal. The Holy Spirit will never lead you to steal because it's contradictory to what's written in the Bible. The Holy Spirit will never lead you to be disrespectful to authority. But sometimes we can justify that maybe our disrespect Mm. We deserve to feel the way that we feel. When I was a younger man in the ministry, I very much resented the man who was teaching me and training me, and I was disrespectful. And I convinced myself that my disrespect was all right because I had been so badly treated. But my friends, God was not leading me to be disrespectful. He will never lead you to do anything contrary to what he has written in the Bible. So number one, you need to listen to the voice of the scripture. What does the Bible say? This is the most important signal of all. Furthermore, in 1 John 
chapter 5, verses 14 and 15, the Bible says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, that's the Bible, he hears us, and we know that he hears us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. If it's in the Bible, it is his will. For example, healing. Healing is in the Bible. You know that is the will of God. Walking in integrity. That's in the Bible. That is the will of God for your life. Tithing is in the Bible. That is the will of God. You don't even have to pray about it. Not committing adultery. It's very clearly stated in the Bible. You don't have to pray about that. As long as you're obeying the scripture, you're on track. That's a green light. If the Bible authorizes it, then you can proceed. And remember, the God who leads you will never contradict what he has already written in the Word of God. Voice number two. Are you ready? The voice of the Holy Spirit. If we will listen, the Holy Spirit will lead us. Yesterday, we saw Romans chapter 8, verse 14, which says, As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And that is a divine promise that if you really are a child of God, you can expect to be led by the Holy Spirit. And I told you yesterday that that word led is a form of the Greek word ago, which first is an agricultural term, which pictures an animal like a cow or a goat or a sheep being led with a rope. The rope has been tied around its neck and now the owner is tugging and pulling and the animal obediently follows and goes to where it is led and stays where it is led. And the first thing this tells us is the Holy Spirit will lead us. He's out front. He's tugging on our heart. He's gently pulling on our heart, trying to get us to go in the right direction. He's out front. In fact, Romans 8, 14 in the Greek is a little different. It says, as many as by the Spirit of God are being led. It puts the Holy Spirit at the first of the verse, us behind him like tagalongs. That's our job is to tag along behind the Holy Spirit as he tugs and pulls on our heart, which means usually God is not going to lead us with a clap of thunder or a bolt of lightning. It's usually going to be a tug on our heart. But that word led is also where we get the Greek word agon, the word agon describes a wrestling match between two wrestlers, one trying to hurl the other to the mat. And it is the same word we would use to describe a struggle between the will and the heart. And very often when the Holy Spirit's pulling on our hearts to lead us, our mind goes tilt and says, I don't understand what I'm being led to do. What do you mean give this much money? Could you really possibly mean that? What? You want me to say this to that person? Are you absolutely sure that this is what you want me to do? And we begin to question the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And this is why it's so important to understand that in John 14, 15, and 16, Jesus referred to the Holy Spirit as the Spirit of Truth three times, trying to drive it into us. He's the Spirit of Truth. He's not the Spirit of Error. He is not the Spirit that's going to mislead you. You can trust Him entirely, and He wants to lead us. And when our mind goes tilt because we don't understand, we need to put our mind aside and say, Holy Spirit, I trust that you're really leading us and allow him to lead us. And Romans 8, 14 says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God and you can expect to be led by the Holy Spirit. So voice number one, we need to listen to the voice of the Bible or the voice of Scripture Number two, we need to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And number three, are you ready? We need to listen to the voice of our own hearts. We have to learn to listen to our hearts because God gives us our heart's desires. Psalm 37 verse 4 says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Psalm 20 verse 4 in the New Living Translation says, May he grant you your heart's desires and make all your plans succeed. And many times we're struggling to know if we're really being led, when if we would just listen to our hearts, we would know we're headed in the right direction. If your heart is crying out to sing, probably God has given you a desire to sing. If your heart is crying out to be in business, it may be that God 
has put the desire for business inside your heart. If your heart is crying out for ministry, it may be that God has put ministry inside your heart. And many times we struggle to know the will of God when if we would just listen to our hearts, we would know the will of God. It's already there. That's what our heart is speaking to us. And we need to listen to the voice of our own hearts. But then voice number four, we need to listen to the voice of spiritual leaders. Older leaders who know us very, very well can often help us discern whether we're really being led by the Holy Spirit. And I'll give you a personal illustration. When Denise and I were first married, I wanted to buy an old house and renovate it. You should have seen the house that I wanted to purchase. And in fact, I began the process of purchasing that old house. It had been dilapidated for so long that it had been used in a movie, in a movie, and they burned it because it was supposed to be a house that was burning in the Civil War. The attic of that house was filled with so much bird manure. It was about a foot of bird manure. I'm shoveling manure out of the house. And the thing is, Denise and I didn't have any money at that time. I don't know what I was thinking. Not only was it going to be a challenge that we could buy that heap of junk, I did not have the money to renovate that house. And one day when I was there working, literally shoving manure, an older man from the church who loves me came by and said, Rick Renner, what are you doing? You do not have the money to buy this. You do not have the money to renovate this. What are you thinking? And at first, I kind of got offended with him. I thought, this is a man with no faith and no vision. But my friends, to renovate that house would take a lot of vision and a lot of money and a mountain of faith. And I didn't have any of it at that time. And he said, Rick, let me help you. If God was really leading you to do this, he would provide the resources for you to do it. You do not have the resources to do this. You are about to create a major catastrophe in your life. And though at first I did not appreciate his counsel, God gave me the ability to listen to him. And that man helped me understand I was not being led by the Holy Spirit. That was just something I wanted to do. But because I listened, I was stopped from doing something that would have been a calamity in our lives. And very often, older seasoned people can see things better than we do. And if they say, wow, this looks good, then maybe you need to take that as a green light. If they say, hmm, you need to think about that, then maybe that's a yellow light. If they say, this emphatically is a mistake, you need to listen to that because it may be a red light and God may be trying to spare you from a disaster. And I'm so thankful for people that have spoken into my life at key moments to give me a green light, a yellow light, or a red light. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. And we need to listen to them. But then there's another voice, voice number five. You say, what is that? The voice of circumstances. It is the lowest level of leading, but God can speak to us through the voice of circumstances. And while we shouldn't be led by circumstances, neither should we ignore circumstances. Pay attention to them because often they are a sign that you're headed in the right direction or they're a sign that you're headed in the wrong direction. The voice of circumstances is very, very important. When a door slams shut, Hmm, that's probably a signal that that's not the direction that you're supposed to be going. If it looks like a door is swinging wide open, remember that God is the God who opens doors. That may be a circumstantial evidence that God is leading you in that direction. And even though I'm not led by circumstances, I've learned through the years to pay attention to circumstances. But then there's another voice, number six, the voice of faith. Will this thing that I think I'm being led to do, require faith. Hmm. Romans 14 verse 23 says, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And I've personally learned through the years that when God is really leading me to do something supernatural, whatever it is, it's going to require faith on my part. My faith will be challenged. 
It's going to require me to stretch. It's going to require me to grow. God wants to do more than just use us. God wants to change us. God wants to develop us. He wants us to do something that's going to require faith. Think about Moses. When Moses was led to lead the children of Israel through the Red Sea, it required faith for him to lift the rod of God and believe that that sea was going to part. Or how about Joshua? When he led the children of Israel into the land of promise and the Jordan River was at flood stage and God said, put your feet in the water first and then the river will part, it took faith. Or how about Jesus to do the will of God? We're told in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7, that Jesus said, God, I'm going to come. I'm going to do your will. But God's will for Jesus meant to be born as a baby, to minister as a man, to die on the cross, to go to hell for three days, and to trust that God would raise him from the dead for Jesus to do what he was being led to do required Faith, And not only that, Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, But without faith, it is impossible to please God. Whatever you do, whatever the Holy Spirit leads you to do, it will require faith. But I've given you six signals to help you determine if you're really being led by the Holy Spirit. Number one, the voice of God's Word. Number two, the voice of of the Holy Spirit. Number three, the voice of your own heart. Number four, the voice of spiritual leaders. Number five, the voice of circumstances. And number six, the voice of faith. If these line up, then you need to take it as a green light that you are to proceed. But remember, 2 Corinthians 13 verse 1 says, Then the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. If two or three of these things line up real clearly, it may be a green light for you to proceed. If several signs are conflicted, it may be a yellow light for you to slow down. If it seems like they all say red alert, then it may be a red sign that you are not to proceed at all. Listen to these six signals and they will help you know how to be led by the Holy Spirit. And if you've gotten off track, these six signals will be used by the Holy Spirit to help recalculate to get you back where you need to be. I'll be back in just a moment, and I want to pray for you. When we're driving down the road on our way to a destination, sometimes we can get lost. But with the help of a GPS, we're able to quickly get back on track and avoid catastrophes along the way. How did we ever live before the days of GPS? But even better than GPS, we have the Holy Spirit inside, and He is the best GPS that ever existed. If you feel you've gotten off track and lost your way, the Holy Spirit knows exactly how to help you recalculate to get back on track again. In this five-part series, Recalculating, how to get back on track if you've messed up along the way, Rick Renner covers Jesus' example of trusting the leadership of the Holy Spirit, learning to listen to the Holy Spirit, six signals to help you be led by the Holy Spirit, five points to help keep you on track, practical help in recalculating to get back on track, Available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $10. This series will help you learn how to get back on track and stay on track. In addition to this teaching series, you can also get the books, The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. In this book, Rick will show you step-by-step step how to identify God's will and how to get started on the path to fulfill it. This book can be yours for only $17. Don't miss this special offer, the five-part series Recalculating and the book, The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends and partners, this is Rick Renner. You can probably see my breath because it's minus nine here right now, but I'm standing in the new building for our Moscow TV studio. And I want to say thank you to you for all of your sacrificial giving, for being a part of our giving team. Phase one enabled us to construct this building and it is completely paid for. The building itself, the windows, the doors, all the way to the roof, even the heating system. And in phase one, we were enabled to purchase our building in Tulsa and now we have secured it. 
But now in phase two, we need to finish the interior of this building. We can't move into it the way that it is today. But my friends, in a very short time, we're going to have cameras working in this building and from this location. We're going to be sending teaching that people can trust to the ends of the planet. And the focus of phase two is finishing this facility. And as I told you before, it's not about buildings. It's about having a building so that we can create programming that will change people's lives. And I'm asking you to please pray about being a part of the giving team to finish phase two which is completing the interior of this building. And I promise you, we will be so careful with every penny and every dollar you give. We understand the value of money. And we're going to pray for God to magnificently and massively multiply your giving back to you again. Thank you so much. Please become a part of our giving team to finish phase two as we complete the interior of the Moscow TV studio. This week, I'm talking to you about being led by the Holy Spirit and recalculating when you get off track. We all listen to the GPS in our phones and in our cars, and the GPS tells us where to go, tells us what to avoid, how to get around accidents and catastrophes, and how to get where we want to go a lot faster. Well, if we listen to our phones, how much more should we listen to the Holy Spirit who is inside us? He is the ultimate GPS. And if we've made a mistake and gotten off track, he'll help us recalculate. And that's why I'm teaching this brand new series called Recalculating, how to get back on track if you've messed up along the way. It is a five-part series that comes in multiple formats with a wonderful study guide. My friend, this is a series that's really going to help you. And right now we're also offering you my book, which is called The Will of God, The Key to Your Success. How to position yourself, position yourself to live in God's supernatural power, provision, and protection. You can really position yourself to live in it. And the Holy Spirit will lead you there. And if you've gotten off track, he'll help you recalculate to get back there. And in today's program, I also mentioned that I have a series called Knowing the Will of God. Oh, you ought to order this. But all of this is available on our ministry website. You can order it by going online or by giving us a call right now. And please, when you reach out to us, let us know how we can pray with you. And Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for the leadership of the Holy Spirit. We thank you that in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. And if we'll pay attention to the signals that you provide, we'll know whether we're on track in the way that we're being led. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. But remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. Thank you for watching this broadcast. For more information on product resources or to learn how you can partner with this ministry, please connect with us at renner.org. Also, please be sure to visit us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you enjoyed that teaching, please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.